Okay, so hello everybody. Welcome to the Learn About Olive Winter 2020 classes. And first I want to start off with introducing you to a couple of our sponsors. And we're gonna start first with Steve Larson from Clarity Asset Management. Hi everyone, uh, thanks Carolyn. Uh, as you mentioned, I'm Steve Larson. I'm with Clarity Asset Management. Uh, some of you uh, have heard from me before, but uh, we're a fee only fiduciary financial planning firm here in Ames and uh, pleased, I should say eager uh, to sponsor Ali. Uh, Ali is a continuing education program matches one of the values we have as a firm to be lifelong learners and life wide learners. And so being able to uh, promote Ali in uh, any way we can, uh, we're pleased to do that. Our specialty as a firm is investing, uh, planning and investing client assets that match our clients' values. And uh, we choose to invest according to environment, social and governance criteria that gets us into the best companies uh, for our clients and uh, matches values the best. So companies that are better stewards of natural and human resources, companies that are governed by wisdom and virtue rather than uh, constraint or uh, self-centeredness and greed. Uh, so uh, we like to serve in that way. Uh, I think if you uh, get into investing basically on the same value system that you use when you give your money away, uh, you give it based on your desires for promoting that ministry or organization or uh, they match your values, we ought to invest our money in the same way. Uh, into companies that would match our value set or promote uh, ideals that we promote, uh, we'd like to promote. Um, so uh, eager to serve in any way. And again, uh, what a pleasure it is to be able to be associated with Ali uh, and promote that good work. Thank you. Thank you, Stephen. Those of you who are brand new members are probably getting one of our, one of the notebooks and let me switch, I gotta switch my views here. Sorry, just a sec here. All right, so you'll be getting one of these notebooks if you're a brand new member. And if you have not received one of the Ali mugs, you'll be asked if you would like one. We don't just send those out. Uh, these were also a mug from Clarity a couple of years ago, I believe, and we have a few of those left. So you'll just have to let Heather know that you're interested in one of those and we'd be happy to send that out. So I should clarify the sponsorship here. Um, Clarity and Green Hills are sponsors of this event of the learning about winter, spring and fall classes. So we are excited to have both of them. So thank you so much. So now I'd like to talk to Linda Lauber from Green Hills. So I, yes, thank you. Good afternoon. I am Linda Lauber. I'm sales and marketing director at Green Hills and Ames. We are a 55 plus community and uh, Continuum of Care, just south of Iowa State University. And I want to ask, how many of you are still catching your breath after last night's women's Iowa State versus Iowa basketball game? That was quite a game. And so we're still celebrating that here at Green Hills. Um, many of our uh, neighbors watched it in the theater last night. and It was fun. Um, Green Hills employees also can show their school loyalty on the days that we play University of Iowa and Iowa State. So we're expecting more excitement at Hilton tonight. And it's so exciting to have 19 Ollie classes this winter appealing to such a variety of interests and backgrounds. I think as I was reading through the curriculum that there should be a requirement when taking managing your digital stuff to enroll in meditation foundations because I think I would have to couple those together. Uh, Green Hills is happy to support this program as we also offer lifelong learning experiences, adventure and personal growth organized by our continuing education committee here at Green Hills. And they have lively lectures um, aligning with Ollie's values. And I was looking at the values of adaptability, curiosity, integrity, knowledge, and passion. So they do align quite closely. And 
uh, please consider the Green Hills lifestyle advantages of a wellness pro program, including a swimming pool, full gym, classroom instruction. We have transportation, um, theater, pet friendliness for dining venues and IT services and future care if it's needed. So you are all invited to our What's Open Wednesday open house this coming Wednesday. It's December 15th at 2427 Hamilton Drive from 1 to 2 p.m. And it's a fantastic townhome recently listed featuring a deck and a new sunroom. So take a sneak peek on our website at greenhillsrc.com to preview this beautiful townhome or any of our other townhomes or apartments on the market. Or give me a call at 515-357-5000 for an in-person or virtual visit to make a plan for your future. So we would just like to say happy holidays from Green Hills. Thank you, Linda. Thank you. Appreciate you and Clarity for all that you do for the OLLI program and your support of lifelong learning. So that thank you very much. And you can see the catalog back behind Linda. Um, some of you who get the print catalog, I should mention this. Um, not sure what happened, but it was a little late getting out in the mail coming out. So hopefully you got yours. I know the electronic version is already out there, so we're good with that. So the one thing I want to mention is Linda mentioned we had 19 classes. Unfortunately, we had to move one of the classes, class number 12. The instructor called me yesterday and ended up with a conflict. And so now that is going to be moved to the spring session. So the murder of Captain James A. King and the origin of the teddy bear will now be in the spring session. Also today, as we go through all the classes and the presenters talking, um, we have two that were not able to be here today. We are gonna go in order, you can do that, but number three, the Margus Sloth Center for Women and Gender Equality then and now will not be able to attend today. And then number 11, Space Force, the newest armed forces division of the military will not be able to attend today. But so we're ready to get started and we're gonna start with Mary Richards. Thank you very much. The name of my class is Does Lady Justice Peek Under Her Blindfold? Uh, I've used several subtitles, uh, Crimes and Criminal Procedure, Can We Ever Eliminate Bias from Our Criminal Justice System? And I guess that's the one that comes closest to what I would like to accomplish. There will be four sessions. First, we'll start out with the history of our justice system in Iowa. Uh, long and involved that reaches back into the ages. The next uh, sessions two and three and as much of four as we need uh, will cover the the process as it happens. The Iowa Criminal Code has three divisions. It starts out with crimes. Uh, the next section is criminal procedure and the last section is corrections. We'll be talking mostly about uh, the criminal procedure part of it, although the crimes and the corrections will enter into our discussion as well. Uh, the criminal procedure will discuss bringing the charge, uh, discovery, what is discovery in a criminal case, pleas and plea agreements, motion practice. Motion practice is something that the public almost never hears about except that you know at the end of a trial that attorney always the defense attorney always files a motion to dismiss. People find that very confusing. Um, we will uh, discuss trial procedure. This is the part of the process that most everybody is aware of. Most of the public uh, knows about that. We'll talk about the role of the judges, the attorneys, the witnesses, the jury, how juries get selected, uh, the responsibilities of the judge, the responsibilities of the attorneys. We'll discuss the rules of evidence, and uh, that's, that's always been fascinating to me. It takes a whole year's worth of class in law school to go through the rules of evidence. So um, we'll see what we can do in the short amount of time we have. And then the all uh, during all of this time, we will be discussing about where bias and uh, unwanted prejudices or inequalities show up in the justice system. And during the last session, we particularly talk about 
equality versus equity in the justice system. And that's really where we're talking about peeking under the blindfold. Can money buy a not guilty verdict? Um, what is the role of endemic racism and other kinds of societal biases in our system? Political considerations and then personal considerations on the part of the people who are involved. If we have time, we'll talk about some other systems and how they try to eliminate bias and prejudice. So that's my, I don't know whether that's 90 seconds, but that's pretty close. Good morning. My name's Ron Palumbo, and you may have noticed that uh, there's a steady stream of news stories about people behaving badly. And in light of that, it's hard not to become pessimistic about our species. That's why I'm offering class number two, psychological studies that offer hope. Now, over the past few decades, studies of human potential have shown that individuals aren't as unrelentingly selfish as they may sometimes seem from these news stories. In fact, there's a small but growing body of research that suggests that most people not only want to help others, but find that in doing so, uh, they, their lives become more fulfilling. So this thing, single session PowerPoint class, which will be offered on Tuesday, January 11th at 11 a.m., offers an introduction to six interrelated topics that deal with human potential. First, we will explore the psychological phenomenon of the growth mindset and the parallel neurological concept of brain plasticity. Next, we will consider the overlooked social benefits of empathy and its relationship to our own personal sense of well-being. Finally, we'll take a look at, and I like this one, the five principles of happy money and see how it overlaps with the theory and practice of paying it forward. So I hope you will consider joining me on this journey and thank you for your time and attention. Good afternoon. My name is Patricia Kimley, and I am offering uh, The Underground Railroad in Iowa, Truth or Fiction. I and my husband recently published uh, a book called the, Under uh, the Only Free Road, The Underground Railroad Saga Unveiled. It is a story about the uh, historical facts of John Brown's last trip across Iowa in 1859, and a fictional story that intersects with that circumstance. And so uh, imagine yourself in class at uh, just a book club meeting, uh, but the, when that book club meeting has the author present, and so you can consider what kinds of questions you would like to ask and I plan to talk about the resources uh, that are available uh, on this front through the State Historical Society for example and through online sources uh, about the Underground Railroad uh, and also um, how taking those sorts of facts and rumors which a lot of at this point over almost 200 years later, we're looking at a lot of things that are rumors that cannot be substantiated anymore. Um, but I found those sorts of stories and used those uh, in my historical fiction. So um, I invite you to sign up for the class. It's a one session, Tuesday, February 1st. And I am not able to stay for the rest of this uh, presentation. So if you have questions, you are mo more than welcome to email me. Um, and that's patty at kimleydesigns.com. And hope to see some of you. Hi, I'm Mary Lou Nosco. 
and I will be teaching class number five. I don't seem to be coming up, Geraldine. No, you're here. Okay. <laughs> okay. I'll be teaching class number five, Intermediate Native American Style Flute Storytelling and Connection. To me, the most exciting thing about this class is that Robin Gentlewolf, RG, a recording artist and flute educator, will be teaching week two. Um, please Google RG and watch one of her music videos. In Native American culture, flute playing was used to tell stories. And we will do that in this class by connecting your song to story. Telling the story of your song connects you to the emotion of your song. It connects you to your flute, to your intention, to your audience, and it actually helps you to memorize it. So in this class, we are going to learn to create simple songs, use our cell phones to capture melodies, uh, easily write out song notation, use story to recreate that emotion and to help with memorization. And finally, we will combine all of these things together into a short music video of you telling the story and playing your song. I will be using a tool called Audio Wow that adds reverb and incredible depth. And I promise that it will make you sound like a rock star. Videos will be posted in a YouTube channel that you can link to your Facebook or download. So, who qualifies as an intermediate flute player? Well, anyone who can play the scale up and down on their flute easily will be absolutely perfect for this class. Also, any key of flute is going to work. So I will end with a quote from my teacher, Jan Michael Lookingwolf. May you always walk in beauty. May you always live in peace. And may we always play together in harmony. Thank you, Mary Lou. Uh, the next three are mine. Number six is managing your digital stuff. It goes without saying that when we're connected to the internet, we need to pay attention to security and privacy. But we should also practice good digital housekeeping to reduce stress, increase efficiency, and simplify life. This course is based on common needs that people come to me for help about, such as my email quit working, I have too many emails, or I can't remember my passwords. This course will help you be in control of your computing devices and not those vice, the devices being in control of you. Number seven, privacy when using the internet. This is actually just a one day on February 1st. In the words of Edward Snowden, it's worse than we thought. You don't even need a Facebook account for Facebook to have a dossier on you when you are away from your home, where you go, what you do. And did you know that your smart TV, your smart doorbell, and Alexa are always spying on you? This Ollie class teaches you what to do gives you the tools to take back much of your privacy when using the internet or just living in the technological age. And then course number eight, understanding global climate change. Uh, this is actually four weeks and Wednesday mornings uh, from nine to 10.30. As we experience more devastating effects of the changing climate each year, it gets harder and harder to be upbeat teaching this course. Understanding global climate change provides an overview of what cosmologists have learned about our changing climate. We avoid the political rhetoric and look at what the science says. The goal is for each of us to better understand what is happening to the climate, why, and how we will live with the changes. We explore why the planet is rapidly warming, the greenhouse gas effect, the devastation of ocean acidification and rising ocean temperature, and the effects of, on ecosystems due to the rapid warming. And after learning about all the crises that we are in, we finished the course in the fourth week 
concentrating on what we can do to make a difference and improve our communities. Okay, I'm Jim Patton. I'm facilitating course number nine. I'm not the teacher, but uh, the, the uh, professor couldn't be here today, so I told him I would speak for him. Class number nine is called The Rise to Power of Communist China Party, uh, Chinese Communist Party, excuse me. And uh, this will be a four week class every Wednesdays, uh, January 12th through the 2nd from 11 to 12.30. The class will be recorded for those who are enrolled in the class, and only those. Uh, let me first of all give you a little introduction of Dr. Wang, who will be the professor. He's a university professor here at Iowa State University in history, with primary emphasis on modern China, U.S. foreign relations in the Cold War. He's a native of northwest part of China, came to the United States 18 years ago to complete his PhD at Georgetown University. He's also studied at Yale with a postdoc fellowship. And he recently has published in a journal of Cold War Studies, an article uh, that he's uh, done research on. He has his first book out called Isolating the Enemy in the US-China Interactions between 1953 and 1956. So you will notice that in his teaching and in other things, he tries to put in uh, time frames that you can focus on. He's working on a second book right now called Britain and China US Relations in the 50s. He has uh, taught Ali classes actually before in 1916 fall. Uh, he taught about the history of the People's Republic of China. And uh, so China is his expertise. Uh, just briefly, things that are written in the catalog, but you can go back and understand this. The class examines the history of the Chinese Communist Party from its beginning in 1921 to the establishment of the People's Republic of China. In 28 years, this organization of about a dozen rebellious intellectuals overthrew the Republic of China, establishing a communist regime that has ruled from 1949 to the current time today. So here's some questions he's going to pose. What contributed to the communist Chinese Communist Party rise, and to what extent was it a Soviet export or a Chinese organization? And thirdly, what strategies were adopted to secure its success? In his program, he will be using excerpts from a book called The Search for Modern China by Spence, and also a book called Red Star Over China by Snow, and some documentaries that uh, you'll be able to uh, tune into China, A Century of Revolution by Williams, and another documentary, The Road to War slash Japan. Now, other references will be noted during the course, and, and we'll make sure that you have a way to access those. I would just say by closing on this, the significance of this presentation is noted by the current economic and military power of one of the most powerful countries in the world in particular the tensions between the US and China over the independence of Taiwan. And in my personal conversation with uh, uh, Dr. Wang, he's very concerned about this and he's gonna, in his four part presentation, give you some insight that might be helpful as you watch developments take place. So I look forward to inviting you to class number nine, the rise to power of the Chinese Communist Party. Hi, my name is Kristen Roach. I'm not sure if it's going to auto click over to my screen. Can you guys hear me okay? Yes. Okay, great. Um, and I just muted myself for a second there. Sorry about that. I'm going to be teaching class number 10, uh, winter tonic tea tasting. And as the title says, it's actually going to be a tea tasting, which I feel is a really fun aspect of it. Uh, but with that, I just want to put it out there up front. There is a little bit of a deadline. So you must register by December 28th in order for us to ship you your teas for the tea tasting. 
Um, if you're here locally, you can come pick it up at the shop and that's in downtown Ames on Main Street. And so you have a little bit more leeway with your registration time. The class is gonna be January 12th, which is a Wednesday from one to 2.30 PM. And you know, kind of the perfect after lunch tea time so now that I have the things that I really wanted to make sure to emphasize right up front and not forget, uh, a few things about myself and about what we'll be doing in the class. I'm Kristen M. Roach. I'm an artist and author, and I'm the owner of Littlewoods Herbal, which is a tea and tea shop and modern apothecary in downtown Ames, Iowa. Um, we blend all of our own teas and spices, and we really think of tea and spice as a way to incorporate wellness into your daily habits. And that's really what the class is going to be focusing on. And one of the uh, kind of missions of our company is that we try to spark curiosity in people. We really want to help uh, those in our community expand their view, expand their experiences. And so when Ollie asked us to offer a presentation and a tea tasting, we were like, yes, that is absolutely what we are about. And we love how curious and enthusiastic everyone is here about learning and experiencing new things. Um, I had some other notes for myself because I tend to get a little bit off track and forget. Oh yeah, so we'll be tasting actually four teas. And I'll be covering kind of like how you can incorporate health and wellness through tea. And we'll dip a little bit into just like mentioning kind of culinary stuff too, because there's some overlap in ingredients. And by using uh, tea as like a vehicle to introduce yourself and your daily habits to herbalism, which is where most of my formal training is. And um and it's kind of like the root of a lot of our blends. So I won't be covering any specific medicinal information or I, I can't really address um, specific ailments that participants are dealing with, but I can give some general guidance on what different plants are used for what and how they relate to kind of winter wellness in particular. And of course, if you have any questions, feel free to email me at info at littlewoodsherbal.com. And I, th I think that's all the basics. Um, so I'm really looking forward to this. Don't forget that December 28th deadline if you're having your tea tasting kit shipped and we'll see you in January. Hello everybody, I'm Heather Bristol. I'm the Ollie Program Assistant. Uh, Ray Riley will be teaching class number 13, the Armchair Tour of Art on Campus. She's not able to be with us today, but she did send us some comments to share on her behalf. So she says, I don't know if Yogi Berra actually said this, but he could have. You can see a lot by looking. During this armchair tour, we will slowly look at a number of artworks on campus and discover what they are all about. We will all share thoughts mm -hmm. as we examine the artworks. Yes, that means all of you can participate in the discussions. The more, the merrier. The class will not include the Grant Wood murals or the larger Christian Peterson sculptures, but with more than 2,500 artworks to choose from, we'll have lots to look at. We'll even climb to the top floor of Beardshire to explore the elegant skylights. At the end, we'll view some portraits of people that you probably know. So leave your coat in the closet and find a comfortable chair and join us for the tour. Hi, I think I'm next. Good afternoon, I'm Anna McCracken. I'm founder of the newly launched Ames Writers Collective. And my event is number 14 in the catalog with the description on page 23. I hope you will join the celebration of stories on January 19th, a one day event when Ollie writers, many of you, whom you may know, will read their stories written in my various classes from over the past year and a half. In each class, Ollie writers wrote personal stories inspired, inspired by writing prompts their mission and challenge to cap their stories at 700 words. Imagine their groans of delight. Capping stories at 700 words encouraged them to write with brevity with emphasis on sensory details. 
During the sense, excuse me, during the celebration of stories, you might hear a story about a childhood escapade in New Zealand, a story about a deep and meaningful friendship, the aromas of a meal made by a potential mother-in-law from India, and an eight-year-old's encounter with a doctor on a Greyhound bus that fueled her budding desire to become a physician. Their stories are touching and inspiring. One or two might cause you to shed a tear. Many will make you laugh. You can read sneak peeks in the snippets that have been published in the last three Ollie newsletters. I invite you to join the Ollie writers on January 19th for an engaging afternoon celebrating the art of the written word. Thank you. Did I render everybody speechless? <laughs> <laughs> um, let's let's go to number sixteen. Okay, this is Sam Wormley again. Number sixteen is home computer security. Four weeks on Thursday mornings from nine to ten thirty. Problems, bugs continue to be found in hardware, operating systems, application software networks and technology. There's an ongoing battle between the good guys trying to find and fix those problems and the bad guys finding and exploiting those problems. Your role in this ongoing drama is important. The main areas that we are going to cover are phishing. Do not respond to phishing, ignore, delete. Passwords, use a password manager. Privacy, blocking trackers, do not give away information. Connecting or connections, using secure internet connections and uh, or a VPN, VPN stands for virtual private network. Backups, back up everything so that nothing can be lost. LAN stands for local area network. Take responsibility for the things that you connect to the internet. And finally, and maybe even the most important, updates. Update everything. Always do the updates. So this course will help keep you safer and more private. Thank you. Hello, I'm Peter Halleck. My course is number 17, Personalities in Early Aims. I uh, taught a course last year on uh, just the history of the first few decades in Ames. I thought at that time I was going to be able to talk about both the timeline and some of the individual personalities, but I ran out of time. I'm uh, just learning to uh, how much I can cover in a period of time. So there's a number of uh, well, there's all kinds of individuals, but we tend to only hear about a few, such as uh, Greeley or uh, Cynthia Duff and stuff. I'm going to try to cover a number of other individuals that don't tend to be talked about that much. Some names are Hattie Lucas, Ben Reed, Widow Bradley, W.D. Lucas, James Rush Lincoln, Jenny Grist, Tom Rice, D.A. Bigelow, Henry and Dan McCarthy, Winfred Tilden, William West, Sarah Emery Gossard, Cynthia Duff, and George Washington Carver. Now, some of them, there's a lot of information on. A lot of them, we just have a few uh, details about them. So we'll discuss that and uh, see how many we can get covered in the four weeks. It's going to be on Thursdays, 11 to 12.30. I hope you'll join us.
Hey everybody, Heather here again. Um, Colleen Schwartz wasn't able to be with us today, but she will be giving course number 18, Meditation Foundations. She sent me some comments to share. There are many different ways to meditate. At Chopra and in your Ali meditation course, we offer instruction in primordial sound meditation, a powerful meditation technique rooted in the Vedic tradition in India. Chopra co-founders Deepak Chopra and David Simon have revived this ancient practice of sound meditation and made it available in a format that's easy to learn. When you learn primordial sound meditation, you will receive a personal mantra. A mantra is a specific sound or vibration, which when repeated silently helps you to enter deeper levels of awareness. A Sanskrit term that translates as vehicle of the mind. A mantra truly is a vehicle that takes you into quieter, more peaceful levels of the mind. As many studies show, a regular meditation practice offers numerous health benefits. As you meditate on a regular basis, you will notice an increased sense of well-being as well as greater energy and creativity. Practicing primordial sound meditation on a daily basis can help you to manage stress, reduce anxiety, improve your relationships, create inner peace, awaken your intuition, become less judgmental, connect to spirit, and enhance your sleep patterns. Pauline looks forward to teaching this form of meditation for all of you to get well on your way with the tools to meditate confidently and joyfully. Hello, I'm Carolyn Johns, a Raising Readers and Story County board member and volunteer. And with me is Lynn Carey, Vice President of the Board and Retired Director of Ames Public Library. So if you were offered an easy way to improve the lives of future generations, would you seize that opportunity? That's what we're offering in class number 19, titled Grandparents, Parents, and Caring Adults Help Children Read to Succeed. Most people agree that reading, talking, and cuddling with young children is good, but do you know why and how this works? In session one, we'll share research about child development and some effective programs. Session two will highlight early literacy initiatives in Story County. Session three will feature things anyone can do to make a positive difference. And the stakes are high. On the plus side, reading to children is one of the strongest predictors of school success. Even having 25 books in the home makes a difference. On the negative side, children who lack basic literacy skills when they enter school are three to four times more likely to drop out later. We'll be joined by three experts, Dr. Connie Beecher, Dr. Neil Rowe, and Malai Amfer. We hope you join us Thursdays from 3 to 4.30 in the afternoon, January 13th, 20th, and 27th. Just a small correction on that, Carolyn. Um, your last class will be on February the 3rd. So you'll have one class that you don't have one day. We'll get skipped out. Oh, okay. Okay. So just FYI on that one, folks. So, well, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I don't remember what's happening in between there, but yeah, we, for some reason, there's something there. Sorry. We promise to be there. <laughs> okay, great. So let me put my video back on. So now we have an opportunity. Oops. There. So um, we have an opportunity now. If anybody would like to ask questions of any of our instructors, you can do that now. I so anybody just go ahead and either start talking, raise your hand, and let's do that. Anybody have questions? And you're all ready to sign up, right? You've got your catalog already marked, <laughs> got all of them checked off. Lots of them, right? Okay. So don't forget, tomorrow morning, 8.30 a.m., online registration begins. So if you have anything else, you can let us know. 
I can't think of anything else right now. Don't forget also, we do have one members only lecture this winter, and then it's going to be on, oh, wait a sec, that says February 2nd. Well, you know, we're going to have to figure that out for that reading class. All right, let me, we'll figure that one out. Somehow that got marked wrong. So we, one, there'll be one members only lecture, and that will be from Michael Rolf. And it's, I don't have the, the um, description in front of me because we didn't have that for the catalog, but we will get that on for you. But that'll be a great one. I believe it's on vaccines, I rem if I remember correctly. Um, but we will put out some general information and let you go for, for sure what's going on. So I apologize, Carolyn, if we got some dates wrong there for you and we will get that all fixed. So anybody have anything else? Geraldine. Yes. We we haven't had our catalogue. Are they still coming or what? They are. And I apologize. Okay. Printed versions. Um, I just got mine in the mail at home yesterday. Oh, well, <laughs> if you haven't got it. <laughs> uh, and I have, you know, you would think I'd have a little pull, you know, but I don't. <laughs> so I know the it's last online. person. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Okay, I know thanks. it's online. So, yes. So it looks like this. Yes, I've seen the picture. Very good. So if you don't get one, please let me know. If you normally get a paper copy, please let me know that. So anything else? Carolyn, at the beginning, you mentioned a couple of changes. I think one of them was a class that's being moved, but is that the only change in the schedule? As far as I know, yes. Okay. I'm going to have to double check now on the, the reader class and make sure that that's updated. What? Uh, what was the class that was postponed till spring? Excuse me? There was a class postponed till spring. Which one was that? That is, that was number 12, the murder of Captain James A. King and the origin of the teddy bear. And that's with um, Tom Hoover, who taught a class for us just the last session. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Gerilyn, it looks to me like the lecture is on Wednesday the 2nd and the Raising Readers program is on Thursday the 3rd. Okay. Is that correct? You know, I don't know. I'll have to look at my oh, calendar. Okay. So it, it doesn't... I was, I was just, I was just checking and that's what I'm seeing as well. So oh, I think there's I no... We have a members only lecture on Wednesday, February 2nd, and then the last class for Carolyn and Lynn is on Thursday, February 3rd. So then can sign up for both. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, so in the catalog, it does say February 3rd. So, yeah. All right. And I knew there was something in between. So, was that members only lecture there? Okay, excellent. And remember, for the members only lecture, you only have to be a member. You do not have to register. You just show up that day. So, if the topic sounds of interest, you just come. And if you are a member, you will get a, um, well, the other thing too is when you're taking um, classes, you will be getting an email from me every Friday telling you what's going to be happening the next week. And also in that, you'll be getting links to like uh, the members only lectures. When you register for a class, you will be getting an email from Heather the Friday before your class begins. We have found that if we send all that information out way too early, they tend to get lost. Not all of us are as good as Sam as keeping our email up to date. And, you know, I need to take Sam's class. I'll just tell you that right now. So, um, so we try to keep that information as close to the top of your, of your emails as possible. But always feel free to, to connect with one of us if you need um, have any help. So anything else? Good questions. Okay. Well, if there are no other questions, thank you all for coming. Um, I hope that you will keep Heather and I very, very busy tomorrow and throughout the week. And we are looking forward to seeing all of you again in person, or not in person, in online. I was just gonna say, we are starting to work, the curriculum committee is starting to work on doing some in-person classes for the spring session. Not all of them, but some. So, so those of you who wanna be back in person, just hold on a little bit longer. We're gonna try and get there, so. Okay. All right. So have a great day, everybody. Take care. Bye.